Well guys, I got all of the wood pre-cut for the door of the smokehouse, and look what the dogs drug in. To I decided help me to ruin the show, man. To, to help me finish this door, so that's what we're getting ready to do, is put this thing together. You know, an entrance is never good unless I say, what we doing?
Don't lock it. I decided to add this little piece on the back here just to kind of cover up the cracks so some of, most of my smoke doesn't get out. I know in the building it's going to be quite a bit of loss in the smoke because of all the cracks in the building. So this will just help to cover some of that. so open up a little bit more, but that's like 90 degrees. How about that? Yeah, that's pretty good. We got us a nice dough. Nice dough. Now I need to put a stop in here. Okay, let's see how long that's going to take. Let's see if this that special one. You know, I had a sock joke, but it, but it stinks. <laughs> All right, guys, check it out. We raise that up, open the door, and close it. We're in there. All right, so what I got to do now is I got to take just a little bit off right in here. 
so that the door will open up just a hair bit more. See how that fit. Oh yeah, there we go. Now yeah, we're open up a little bit more. How about that? Alright guys, the only thing I have left to do now is actually um Get the metal put on there. Oh, we have to burn it too. So that is the next thing. Hey, what do you call a rich head of cattle? The two percent. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. All right, y'all. We're fixing to paint a sign, and if anyone knows anything, Dad can always do it better than I can. So I'm gonna hand the spray paint over to him. Um, if you guys remember the folks that came up from Louisiana and brought us this really nice sign last week uh, to hang up, I'm going to have to coat it because outside here it would, you know, the humidity and, and if it got water on it, it would actually ruin it. So I've got some of this flat enamel. We're going to go ahead and paint this so that we can hang it up. Um, right now we're going to hang it up at the outdoor kitchen, but when I get the new sawmill built, this is going to go up by the sawmill. And right. if it ever goes missing, I didn't take it. Y'all, right. I do have to say, I'm learning how to spray paint from my dad because when I've tried to spray paint, you know what I do, Dad? What? My finger's on that trigger like I'm running a NASCAR race. Uh, Obviously not what I'm supposed to do. Another word, and then right here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It does, don't it? All right, Jennifer's going to have to head out, but she's also going to show you we were able to pick another big, huge bag of beans from the garden. And she's going to take them home and can them. But I mean, look at that. That is another bag Voila. full. So the garden is actually about to wind down. So, um, but we've got, we've actually made a whole lot out of it. That's for sure. We have. That'll be eating pretty good this winter. Yeah. All right, y'all. Good to see you. Take care. Folks, I'm on the back side of the cabin and I've got a problem that's going to have to be fixed that I'll show you here in just a second. When this cabin was put up, my son flew in from Texas to help me and I had my brother-in-law and my son-in-law up here. Of course, they all have jobs and everything was done in a real hurry. It had to be done in a week's time uh, so that my son could fly back and everybody else could go back to work. So, um, over a period of time, I'm going to show you what has happened to this corner of the cabin. I came back here the other day and I seen this right here. This is some rock that has occurred. A little bit of dirt was piled up there and I couldn't see it. So it has occurred primarily on this corner and a little bit on the front side. In part, the culprit, now I knew this corner was always low, um, but it didn't appear to have any issues. Uh, I think part of the reason the culprit being this bank right here, red clay and shale, is what this cabin is built on and it does flake off uh, you know over time and this corner right here I had uh, several videos uh, back during the series when we were putting the cabin up I actually had the tractor back here with the box plate on an angle making a ditch on this side and but what has happened this used to be lower than the footer but now this is higher than the footer so I think the rain is coming off and was settling a little bit in this corner right here 
and not drying up like the rest of it. So what I'm going to have to do is build a small knee wall, um, which I'll do just like the raised bed, stick in some posts, put up a couple of logs, and that way when stuff flakes off, it'll come down and rest against that wall. Uh, but this is, needs to be dug back down. I do need a French drain on three sides of the cabin, which I was going to put in before I landscape, but I had to have the rock on the wall first because when you put your topsoil in here, you slope it up on to that and then slope it away from the house. So what I'm going to have to do is get all this stuff moved where I can get the tractor back in here, dig all this back down, fix my post um, and treat that, and then get my rock laid on that uh, so that I can actually come back in here dig a trench, put my French drain in, then I can uh, continue on with my landscaping. So this is a problem that I didn't expect to work on right now, but it's going to have to be fixed before any further damage happens. So let's get all this stuff moved and we'll get on with the process. Before I get started removing all that stuff, I thought I would tell you kind of how I have been doing this. The front side I knew I was going to build a um, front porch on, so I really wasn't worried about that. The French drain is basically going to be on three sides. Uh, where everything will be carried and run off uh, the hill on the front side of the cabin. When I came to a post like this, I basically wrapped it with tar paper like I did this knee wall right here so that the rock and the mortar wouldn't rest right up against this and cause it to wick any moisture. Um, but since then, what I had intended on doing was I got a, a bucket of tar. I'm going to tar up about a foot on the post and come all the way out to the edge of the footer down here and kind of make it make it uh, slope like this and then I will cover it with tar paper before I actually continue the rock on and that should provide um, the uh, protection against any moisture uh, entering into the post after I get the rock wall laid up here. So when I got up this morning I checked on the internet and there's basically two types of rot. One is wet, the other one is dry rot. Primarily what I have is wet rot, um, which is the least of the two. If you have dry rot, that's a big concern because then you have to treat all of the wood. But uh, if it's wet rot, you just have to treat what's causing the problem and then it will stop. So the material that I found um, back in the 70s, there was a polymer, I think it was a polymer, that was invented where you can actually um, treat the wood. And what it does is it adheres to the fibers and penetrates in there. And once it sets up and gets hard, the wood is actually stronger than it was beforehand. Um, but I couldn't find what they were talking about on the internet, but when I did go to Ace Hardware, I was able to find this wood hardener, and then I found this wood filler. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drill a couple of holes, uh, probably half inch holes, about six inches high down at an angle, and I'm going to pour this in according to what I read, uh, you pour it in till it won't accept it anymore. That means it has totally penetrated the wood. Uh, but then I'm also going to take a brush and brush the outside of it. And then I'm going to take this wood filler and fill that void down there. Now I took a screwdriver and dug out as much as I could that was loose. Uh, but I'm going to fill it up with this right here. So when that sets up, that now this is waterproof, uh, that won't happen anymore. And then I think with coating the tar uh, around the post, putting the tar paper around it, and then putting in the French drain will keep any future rot from happening. I may even go on the inside underneath, cut me a couple of 4x4 four four posts, put actually in that knee wall that I had built behind my rock, I put in a couple of those supports right there so each corner will actually be beefed up. But um, anyway, like I say, this is what I have found. Now if you've ever treated any wood that is rotted, please leave some comments. Now by the time you see this video, I will probably have already put this in there. But for future reference, uh, if it happens any more on the cabin um, or anybody else that may be reading the comments, if you've had experience like this before, uh, please leave it down there in the comments so everybody else can learn from it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this material moved in the back so that we can get the tractor back here and see if we can get that slope back like it should be so that any water that does come back here uh, in the future will be able to drain off until I can get everything, the drain put in, and everything landscaped and fixed.
Well, I'll tell you what, that shale is hard digging. Um, and so is that red clay when it's hard. But I've got that about three to four inches lower over there on that corner. And then of course it actually slopes down in that direction. It's probably a foot uh, down there. And of course this is gonna get a French drain put in here. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and mix that stuff up and we'll see about treating that post. So I may have to wait till tomorrow, but once I get that putty put on there, then I'm going to go ahead and take that tar and I'm just going to tar it all over and then I'll probably go ahead and take some tar paper and run around it. But I'm going to tar right down onto the footer and around on top of the footer so water won't be able to get in there anymore. Um, then I've got that next post. It's not nearly as bad to do, but I've got this dug down now. Um, it's going to drain so probably what I'm going to have to do is change my priorities again and start building a retaining wall because now that I've got this cleaned out I need to do something about keeping that um, nice and clean like that and sloped so that when that stuff runs off the hill it doesn't build up back up down here. been about 10 minutes ago when I started this and I'll tell you what this stuff is already set up harder than the woodpeckers lit Alright guys, I've got that post all nice and dressed up and smooth all the way around and that stuff is already set up rock hard. I'll tell you, you got to really be on your toes when you're putting that on there because once you mix that hardener in there, um, you're only looking at maybe uh, tops five minutes before it's hard and you can't do anything with it. So that high performance wood filler by Minwax really does a good job.
Well, we've got the new sign hung up there now, and it actually really looks good. I want to thank Michael and his wife for bringing that uh, to us from Louisiana. Now remember, um, I'm just hanging it here temporarily till we get the new multi-purpose barn built down there. I'm actually going to hang it up where the sawmill is. But be sure and stay tuned uh, on the next video because I've got another idea I had just thought about uh, reinforcing those posts that had rotted on the bottom and I'll show you that in the next video. Anyway guys, we hope each and every one of you have a fantastic day. You all take care and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.